Hi everybody, welcome back to our final uh, lesson in basic GMAX modeling. Once again, this isn't a class for making objects in there because that process hasn't really been finalized yet. But it is an excellent start in how to model in GMAX and of course I'm talking about modeling for there all the time. So, uh, in our final class we're going to learn all about texturing. Um, we're going to cover how to change the graphics driver also in GMAX because if you've been attending my classes I probably had you set it to Heidi and Heidi is sort of like the built-in uh, hardware based so or is the software based I'm sorry software based rendering engine uh, that comes with GMAX and it has some issues <laughs> all of its own um, and uh, basically there's also going to be you know as part of the class a website where you can download these textures as a zip file or you can just write, if you don't like zip files, if you're paranoid, you can always just right click on the images and save them off to your hard drive. So the textures for this lesson are provided, provided you're actually taking my class, not just watching this on YouTube. And, and when you're done with this, make sure you sign up for my uh, GMAX Bootcamp class. That'll take uh, you through the process of how to make a simple object, put in a master node, and actually submit it to there once and a collision mesh at once there actually allows us to have submissions again. Anyhow, have fun exploring. Remember, it's a video. You can pause it at any time. If you're actually taking the class, remember, you can come ask me questions. And uh, if you're not taking the class, you can, of course, post comments down below. And once I approve them, uh, assuming they're not idiotic or moronic or talking about Second Life, I'll probably, you know, respond. Okay, let's begin. I'm using the four arrow tool. I'm right clicking on my house, or left clicking on my house. Now I'm going to right click and convert to editable mesh. Uh, one of the things I noticed about the dollhouse when we made it last week is, well, it's way too tall. So we are going to use the vertex tool right over here with the little dots. You remember those? And in our front view, we're going to draw a box by holding our mouse button down, our left mouse button down, surrounding the dots basically at the top. Uh, and the reason you're going to want to do this is because today's lesson is all about texturing. And if you put a bunch of textures of, for example, we're going to make a brick house, and you grab all these dots and you scrunch them down, these triangles are going to suddenly become like this, and your bricks aren't going to match up. They're going to be all crunched together and distorted, and everything's going to be messed up. So we're going to modify our model and then texture. Of course, you could always, I suppose, retexture it later, the whole thing. You know, but that's a lot of work. So uh, it's always a good idea to have your model pretty much just about the way you like it before you start bothering with any textures. And in this case, I'm liking this much better. Right clicking, converting to editable mesh. We're now going to go and uh, add some other things on here. We're going to go to this little menu up here. This is the modifier list menu. We are under this little rainbow under the rainbow. Wasn't that a bad movie with Chevy Chase? Oh well anyway we're gonna pull this little triangle down, the modifier list and from that list we're gonna be using two things today. Let me show you which ones we're gonna be using. Uh, these are under UV coordinate modifiers. That's the thing. You may have to scroll the scroll bar down. There's a bunch of stuff depending on the size of your screen. And we're gonna be using UVW map and also later unwrap UVW which we're not using right now. So uh, let me back up a couple steps because I did both. UVW map. Okay, what this does is it says, hey, um, it draws a little box. And this is the box where you're going to drag and drop your texture. And the way it's going to work is imagine there's like, I don't know, like from school there's a, a slide projector or an overhead projector projecting a light down onto this object. And the light is like an x-ray, so it's going to go all the way through the object down to the bottom, but it's still, if you look at it from the top, it's going to look like whatever's projected onto this object. So that's the way of thinking about it. This little yellow, orangey line is going to do that. Now, if you're taking the class, you were provided with four textures. There are, uh, a lot of objects in there, by the way, are limited to four textures. More expensive ones, you can have up to ten, by the way. But in this case, there's like a roof. This roof is what we call a repeating texture. It can repeat both directions, both vertically and horizontally a number of times. So that way, instead of making one large texture with all the detail, you can have a texture which is really, really small, but repeats a whole bunch of times. Uh, that's a really good thing to know when you're making 3D models. Same with this brick texture over here. The brick texture can repeat a whole bunch of times. It's what we call a seamless texture 
the edges all meet up with one another. There's a tool like in art programs that allow you to offset the center and then you can make things match. That's what offset center is. You can go horizontally and vertically. Now you don't have to make textures that go both directions too. You can make a texture that basically says, hey, this one's only going to texture left and right. So you could say, make one large texture of your model and up here have a picture of a plant and over here have a picture of somebody's somebody's face you know to put on the wall or something like that and then down here maybe the bottom third or the bottom half of the texture you have repeating wainscoting and you could apply this wainscoting as many times as you want this direction while ignoring this part of the texture on the bottom part of your walls so it's not like you have to use your entire texture has to repeat all directions or you could vice versa make a texture that had like something that repeated over on this side up and down vertically. So uh, when you're making your textures be thinking about that that you only have a limited number and they have to be very small. These are by the way I think 64 pixels in width and in height. Everything has to be a multiple of 8. So you know 8, 16, 32. Uh, I don't really think you need to use a texture smaller than 8. Uh, it, it tends to not compress very well. There's also non-repeating textures. There's a door. I mean, I suppose you could have double doors and flip it over or something like that. And then there's a picture which basically has two textures, one on the left and one on the right. And I made these textures when I was making my mini Lagoland. So basically, they're looking in the windows of uh, like the museum, the their museum. Uh, and I never built this part of the the I never built the little uh, model of this. But uh, basically, it's shot filming looking down. So we're looking into the building, seeing a lot of the floor. Not very realistic if you're making a real building, but since Mini Lagoland, you view it as the height of a giant, it works out pretty well. So we have these four textures. We're now going to start dragging. We're going to drag the brick textures, drag it down. Uh, it's got to go inside that orange box that's drawn around our house. And you got to drag, drag it into the perspective window. I don't think you can drag it into the, any of the other ones and have it work. You could play around with that. See, if, Let me know if it does work. Uh, okay, so now we've got we've textured our house. Now, now that the object has a texture on it, we could submit it to there. Uh, if you were making a sign, as you can see, it's like projected light looking straight down on it. So it doesn't look very good. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, we're going to fix that as we go along. So the next thing we're going to learn about is the GMAX Material Navigator, which sounds like a very Ferengi term. And it has a, a, an icon which looks vaguely like Electronic Arts, at least color-wise. Uh, don't tell them. Uh, basically, we only have one texture right now. It's material number zero. It's a standard texture, and it's applied to our object, which we never really gave a name to it, so it's called box one. Uh, or your object may be called something else. Maybe it's, yeah, I guess it would be box one. Anyway, uh, if, you, if you click on this part of the texture twice, you'll get a new little window. This is the material editor for this particular material. Uh, and there's only a couple things we really need to worry about in here. Number one, does this material glow in the dark? You can set these for there in the in the previewer, right, as you go to submit it and then test it and make sure you got it right. You don't have to do this here, but it's a good idea to do it here, especially if you're ever going to give anybody else your models. You don't want them to all glow in the dark. So you click this checkbox. I know it seems counterintuitive. Is it self-illuminating? Does it light itself up? No. It does not light itself up. Okay, so check mark doesn't glow in the dark. Unchecked mark glows in the dark. And we're going to use both in this model. So... Uh, the next one is, does it need to be two-sided? Now, if you're making like some plants, you know, and you're using flat planes to sort of imitate the top of a tree or a bush or some grass on the ground, you would want that to be two-sided. If nobody's ever going to see the inside of the object or the other side of the uh, material, leave that unchecked. It's just a good idea. Uh, no one's going to see the inside of this house. It's a tiny dollhouse. Uh, if you're using two-dimensional walls, instead of using a a three-dimensional wall has thickness, then two-sided would be for you. But in this case, no, we don't need it two-sided. Next thing is to give it a name. Um, I always give my first texture in my models, uh, my, my little initials, so like F7. Please do not name your model F7. That would be a big no-no because people would think you're stealing my models. <laughs> uh, anyhow, after that, then I put what it is, so brick. And this is just one word. I think it has to be one word. I'm not aware if you can name this with spaces in it. And I know that it also removes any capital letters. So when you when you export it to your model. So I'm getting the feeling probably you can't have spaces either. Um, and basically we just close this windows up. There's nothing to save. You don't have to worry about any of the other buttons right now. And you close up the material editor too. 
All right. So now we have uh, changed this quite a bit. So let's go to the next step. We're going to right click, convert to editable mesh. I do that 10 billion times a day. Uh, probably don't need to do it all the time. But we're going to click over here on uh, the the element tool, I think is what they call it. But it, it allows you to grab an entire um, box in this case. And we're going to click on the box of our house, which is, you know, this area sort of down here. Okay. Uh, and basically, it'll uh, light the thing up. And so basically, the whole thing on the bottom is going to be selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to do another UVW map from the pull down menu. UVW map from the pull down menu. All right, and then we're going to select a different type of mapping. Now there's a whole bunch of different types of mapping. Occasion a lot. I use planar a lot. Uh, once in a blue moon, I use cylindrical. I use box occasionally. I use face a lot. Uh, spherical and shrink wrap. You know, if you're trying to make some kind of psychedelic hippie thing, play around with those. You'll have a lot of fun, especially if they're animated textures. When you get done, that's a way you can really stretch a small texture out, make it look really different. But for making a house. <laughs> Not very useful. Anyway, I'm going to say box. So when I say box, and I click the little check, bo check dot next to box, the check dot next to box, now I have my bricks sort of mapped out the right way. It's like there's a projector projecting a light this way with the texture, another projector standing on this side of the house projecting the light this way, one back here projecting it on the side you can't see, and the same one around here projecting it basically so that it fits in those orange lines. Now, Let's make this bigger. So I'm going to click in this. I'm sorry. Hang on a minute. Eh. I clicked off the house. I, I got to click in the bottom window, and I'm going to go ahead and use the minimum maximum toggle to make this thing a little bigger so you can see what we're doing here. I'm now using the zoom in, the hand a little bit. There we go. Now, you can control the. This is a repeating tile, a repeating texture, a seamless repeating texture. You don't have to memorize that. It's not going to be on the test. But. Uh, we can have it repeat a whole bunch of times. So uh, here's some ways we can do this. Number one, how many times does the picture appear on here? Here's the U and the V, and right now it's one. So that's why that orange line. In between here and here, it's putting our 64 by 64 pixel texture one time. Same with the other side. All right, we can grab the little scroll bar and we can play around with it. We could make like more bricks. Now keep in mind it's going to be seen from way far away. So maybe you just want to have a, just to add a few more layers of bricks. That was, by the way, V tile, vertical tile. And we'll go to U tile, and we'll go ahead and make that a little bit more too. Uh, that looks pretty good. And that's a 1.47. You know, I mean, you could make it more, but I mean, if you do make it like three or something like that, the problem is when you're zoomed way out, and and this is a small object, we're not going to be able to see that detail. It's just going to look like a fuzzy mess. So let me undo that. There is there is an undo. So I have about one and a half. So like one, you can also type the numbers in 1.5, and let's say 1.25. And so basically, there's there's the numbers that I'm going to use. You can play around with it and see what you think. Make it look a little different. Once again, these textures were in a zip file on the website, uh, and they were also. Uh, put up on a web page where you could right click and download them. If you're not taking the class, you probably don't have these textures. Uh, but as long as we're talking about textures, it's a good thing that you make all your own textures. Uh, if nothing else, get a camera and go take a picture, picture of a brick wall and then modify it in Photoshop. Uh, for example, uh, this is the brick texture I designed for the Lagmart building and, uh, in Lagoland. And here, basically, what I've done is I have uh, colored it in sort of an orangey color so it looked more like a traditional sort of brick house. Uh, also, we're going to use the same texture on the chimney. And so, once again, your textures really should be original. Don't go to some website and start grabbing stuff. Go out in the real world and start looking around for stuff that, you know, nobody really owns a claim to. Uh, you know, I'm not saying like cars or something like that, but like dirt, rocks, trees, walls. There's an awful lot of those out there. Uh, even a, a camera phone. You, you don't need the world's best images. They just need to be sort of taken straight on. And then you can manipulate them in your art program and get them looking the way you want. You can color them in. You can tint them. Uh, things like that. So, uh, But the ones uh, for this class that I've released, you're, you are welcome to use those textures. They work pretty good for small things. You're not going to like that brick texture if you put it on a house. So go out and make your own. <clears throat> but you can use them, of course, to submit this object if you want to. Uh, when you're done with it. 
uh, those are consider those these four textures like free use textures if you want to use them all right so next step uh, we are going to go back to viewing this normally and we're going to right click on our house and we're going to convert to editable mesh and we're going to get the uh, what do they call that uh, the, the, the polygon tool over here the element I guess that doesn't make any sense it's not a car and we're going to click on the roof you'll notice in all the roofs it's going to be red in all the different views of the roof we're going to convert to uh, actually no uh, yeah yeah we're going to we're going to drag a new texture down here that's what we're going to do I'm sorry I had to repeat this whole thing over again because I made a huge mistake earlier uh, and so here's what we got we've got our, our green roof texture and we're going to drag that and just drag and drop it right under our roof now we already mapped our roof earlier so we did it, it knows how to apply a texture to it if you have another object and you're applying a texture to another object like a box sitting next to it you have to put a UVW map on, mapping on it first otherwise it'll just change colors but not show the texture so if you ever get an object that doesn't show the texture when you drag and drop it you probably forgot to put UVW mapping on and you can add it afterwards it's not like you have to do it before okay so here we've got the, our, our uh, break this isn't too bad but the these are all facing the wrong way. I mean, the tiles are this isn't so good. So let's convert it to an editable mesh. And we should still have the top selected, but we don't. So let's go back to the element tool and, and, and make sure that the roof is in red. And we're going to go to the modifier list. We're going to pull down UVW map. We're going to talk about another type of mapping. We don't really need the projector viewing down on top. What we're going to do is we're going to use face. Yes, he's more than just a character. <laughs> on the A-team. All right, we say face. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I know that was going to work because this particular texture I already made on a, a building before. So now I've got this. Uh, it looks pretty crappy on the ends there, but uh, and it's underneath here too. So we're going to have to fix that. First off, this is once again a repeating texture. And you're looking sort of down on this building. And it prob if you leave this few shingles on it, it's going to look like... Uh, more like a gingerbread house. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the UV, uh, UNV tiles, we're going to make them two each, and that will make the, the roof texture look about about right. That looks pretty good. Still looks miserable on the ends. I mean, who actually shingles the end of their roof? So what we're going to do now is we're going to convert to edible mesh. Let me zoom out. And we're going to grab not the element tool, but this one next to it. The poly, uh, It's not the polygon tool, the face tool. Yeah. And uh, I'll cl click off the house to unselect everything. And then I'm going to click uh, right down here on the, the front of the roof. Make sure that you've actually got the front of the roof. Sometimes you can grab the front of the house or the back of the house using this. There, I've got the right one. It shows up in the views. I'm going to go UVW map again. And I'm going to put it on face, which is, seems counterintuitive because that's just what we did, right? Okay, but now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use these little slider bars to make it less than one. I'm just going to basically use just like one pixel or something like that. So I'll stretch this one way out, way, way out, way, way out. Okay, and then grab the other one. It's like almost zero. Maybe I'll leave a little texture up at the top there like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Then I'll rotate it around to the back got to do the back of the house. Remember, it's a 3D model. <laughs> what you do to the front, you probably got to do to the back. Unless nobody's going to see the back. I mean, you know, it's just something that goes up against the wall and no one's ever going to see it, like a picture frame or something. Who cares? All right, so uh, let's go. You, uh, I've, oh, by the way, what I did is I right-click, I converted to edible mesh while I was blathering on. I clicked the polygon tool, and now I've clicked on the back. And I made sure from the top I've got the back, and I made sure from this side that I have indeed got the back of the house selected I go to UVW map again which is under the pull down modifier list I go to face and I'm just going to stretch this way 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 out and way 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 out here that's good that looks pretty good to me yes so it has a color there but it's not you know oh you know what the underside of the roof there's a small chance somebody might put this on a glass table and then stand underneath it and look up at it so we might as well yeah, I'm a little anal retentive when it comes to junk like this which is why my this lesson is taken so long so I've converted to edible mesh I've gone back to the polygon tool and I'm clicking the bottom of the house I better make sure that I darn well got the bottom of the house no I didn't I grabbed the top of the roof so I try again I just take my mouse I click again why is it not clicking? I click again. Okay, there we go. 
I clicked off and then I clicked again. Now I've got the bottom of the roof. Okay. And I go to UVW map. And now I stretch that way out too. Let's stretch that out this way a ways. And that way a ways. So it's... That looks pretty good. Yeah. So now I've got sort of a... It's not perfect, but it's there. And we're going to do a lot of stuff to make it better. Right click. Oh, you know what? I don't think we ever gave this texture a name, did we? It's important, especially even if you only got four textures. You don't want to go into the previewer when you're making your there model later and, and, and you can't figure out which texture is which and you have to keep applying them and figure out fiddling with it. So let's go back to that material editor. Once again, it looks like um, like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here's our another texture, uh, and you're going to start to see this. This is what they call a multi-texture, and it'll have, um, how do you describe this? It starts with a blue ball over here, and this is a multi-texture, and basically means this object has more than one texture on it. It has a brick texture. It has uh, the roof texture. Well, the brick, we've already named it. Um, so we go down to where the, the little picture for the, the, the number three, two texture is. It's this little guy. And we click twice on it. it brings up the little uh, editing window here. Here's the material editor. This is MT1 because we named the other one brick. We're going to name this one roof. How original. Once again, does it glow in the roof? Heck no. So make sure you check that. Uh, is it two-sided? No, it doesn't need to be two-sided. We can't go inside this building. We can't see. We don't need to see inside it. So uh, self-color there. Close this up. Close this up. And uh, next thing we're going to do, we're going to fix the chimney. So we're going to convert to editable mesh. We're going to grab the, uh, what do you call that again now? I can't remember, the element tool. We're going to click on our chimney. The chimney, once again, is the part in red that sticks up a little bit. And uh, we're going to go to UVW map, which you know where that is by now. Ugh, that looks like crap. Okay, when did this become the Beavis and Butthead show? Next up, we're going to click on box right over here. And uh, now, uh, this box isn't a square, but since it's trying to put the entire texture into the square, the same number of bricks on this side are also appearing on this side, and that looks way fake, because you should have fewer bricks over on this side and more on this side. So, uh, we're also going to make these bricks a different color later. We're going to be using the vertex shading. So, what we're going to need to do is go over here, and I think it's, uh, it's width. We're going to play with the width. We're just going to make this basically a little wider. And what that'll do is it'll make basically this orange box will expand so that it'll show fewer bricks. You could also achieve the same effect with either the, uh, probably the U or the V tile, but in, in this case, uh, it's a little easier to see. Okay, hang on a minute. Let me, let me go down here. I'm just changing the views around. You don't need to worry about that too much. So you can see this as I do it. And basically, uh, I'm going to take the width, and I'm going to make the width wider. You can also make the width smaller, but wider, so that it looks like a reasonable amount of bricks are on this side. How's that look? That's pretty reasonable. The top, I'm not going to worry about. We're going to color it black, so it's not going to show. Convert it to editable mesh. You know what? I haven't saved in ages, so I'm going to go save as. Give this another name. Make sure you're in the right folder. I have a folder called House Textures. I'm going to name this one 8. By now, you probably should have saved this with a slightly different number each time, about 8 times. So, Okay, we are now going to add in our next picture. And this is where I messed up big time in the last one because I did not check to make sure I had selected the right area. So I'm going to convert to Editable Mesh. I probably told you to do that already. I'm going to grab the Polygon tool, and I'm going to click inside one of the windows. There we go. Now, if you do this right, you should see it like this. It should show like this. It should show like this. Why is it not doing that? No. All right. Okay, so I've got it. So it's showing up right. Okay, I've got the whole thing. I hope. <laughs> All right, next up, I'm going to go down and get my next texture. The next texture is a little different because it's not a repeating texture. It's um, a window texture. So I'm just going to drag the window texture down and drop it on the window. Hide my textures away again. Let's see how that came out. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 
Um, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to change the viewports. By the way, somebody had mentioned in the class that they had three-dimensional views in all their viewports, and they were seeing cubes and everything, and they weren't seeing these wireframes. Here's how you do that. Up near where it says, well, like top up here, you can right-click, and then you can select configure. All right. This will bring up a little, and there's all kinds of stuff you could do in here. Uh, but in this case, this is like 3D, smooth and highlights. What we want it to see is probably like wireframe for most of these. If you pick smooth and highlights, you can do that. You can do that for each, and you say OK, and that'll make each one of these planes. I mean, and for final inspection, maybe this might be pretty good for you guys. So, et cetera. So now I've got, this might work out pretty good for what I'm doing right now. But for most of these views, nah, I really don't want them to be that. I just want them to be wireframe. You might also enjoy um, lit wireframes. Lit wireframes are pretty cool because it puts a shadow on the part of your box, which is farther away. It makes more of a perspective look look cooler. So let's take a look. So we've got this window over here. It's messed up quite badly. And we've got this window over here. Let's view zoom in on the front. Okay, so now we need to change this window. So arrow tool, right click, convert to edible mesh, grab the polygon tool, make sure the window is still selected. It is. We go UVW map. Ah, uh, that don't look right. It's not good at all. It's And what it's trying to do is it's trying to put that in the wrong dimension. It's a two-dimensional plane, and we're putting it on... So, how do you describe this? Um, we want to put it on this way. Oh, let me try a different color. We want to put it on this way. Ooh, green. But what it's trying to do is put it on a plane this way onto this two-dimensional object. Since this is two-dimensional, it's, it's all messed up. It doesn't know what it's doing. So we can change that down here. Uh, by the way, this is planar mapping by default. So planar mapping works fine. You don't have to use face for this. Uh, planar mapping works really good, by the way. Uh, but there's alignment down here. We can change this. And let's try X first, and then we'll click. This is a button right here called Fit. So we'll click the X dot and click Fit. Oh, well, that's not too bad, we, except it's still messed up like it was before. We've still got a flat plane here we want to put it on. But now what it's doing is it's trying to put it on a three-dimensional plane going this way. And so it's all messed up again. So let's go ahead and click Y and then click Fit. And does that work? Yes. Now we see our texture. Only problem is this window in particular has two textures on it. One over here, and I probably should be doing that in red, and one over here. So they're, they're different. And what we're going to do is we're going to fix that right now. There's different ways of doing this. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to right click, convert to editable mesh again, grab the polygon tool, make sure we got the same one selected, which is the window. And then we're going to go over here. And we're going to pull this down to uh, unwrap UVW. Unwrap. That's like basically taking it and we're going to mess with it. So we say that. And then we get some other tools. And the tool we're going to use is called Edit. We don't have to worry about save or load. We just click Edit. This will bring up a large box. And the nice thing about this box is I can make this box as big as I want to. I mean, I can make it really big. Uh, and you'll see some things in this box. Uh, for example, there's a little red dot at each corner, because this is a, a box, basically. It's a plane, and it's made up of two triangles. Um, here, let me show you this. So there's, there's, there's two triangles. There's the one here, and there's the one up here. And if you're only seeing one of these, you probably want to undo a bunch of times and <laughs> at some point you grabbed the wrong tool or the wrong polygon. Anyway, you should see all four. What we're going to do is we're going to use some tools. Uh, also, you could rotate things with this. So if this picture is sideways, you can rotate it. Let me make it a teeny bit smaller so we can see the results as we're working. And hey, just for fun, I'm going to show you that. So let me, I'm going to draw a box, just an imaginary box, around surrounding all the dots so that they'll all turn red. So all four corner dots of this are going to turn red. And then I'm going to use the rotate tool, just so you can see this. You don't have to play with this. And you just grab uh, one of the dots, you just start rotating. Oh, out sideways. Oh, now it's in the middle. <laughs> I wonder if there's undo. 
I go control Z. Okay, I can go troll Z a couple times, put it back. So you can see that you can have a lot of fun with that. And that's how you, if you got something that's like tilted at a funny angle, you can use this usually to fix it. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to unselect everything and I'm going to draw a box just surrounding the two dots on this side. This one over here and it's antithesis, hypothesis, hypothesis, hypotenuse of the right triangle. Look! Dorothy plunging necklines and we grab this thing we're just going to drag these over to here so basically it's going to and when I let go watch it's going to snap over the other up oh, there we go now we've got the one window maybe a little bit more there we go so so basically what we did is we said hey just wrap this texture of this thing right here that's all we need to see of it okay so we're done close this window there's no saving you don't have to save anything it's done there's also some other tools out here there's a there's a, a, a scale tool make a thing bigger there's a flip a horizontal left or right uh, there's some other things you can do and play around with there etc and we just close this up and then we've got that texture done now there's another way we can do this too let's go over to the other side of our house because this window still needs to be done too and you know what we haven't named this texture so let's go back to the material editor real quick find the texture click on it twice we're gonna give it a name this is gonna be window or windows or something uh, we don't need to make it two-sided it's not shown from the inside of the model but wait a minute if it's a house and these are windows and you turn off the light in your house but the dollhouse hasn't turned off its lights they'd probably glow so don't check that one in this case let's close it up oh uh, and we also need to know uh, oh I can't believe I forgot to tell you this oh so embarrassing um, when I first started modeling, I made this exact same mistake. I just grabbed textures and dragged and dropped them onto my model wherever I needed them. And I discovered I had like 22 textures when I went to make submit my first model, and they wouldn't let me. Because every time you drag and drop a file, it's a new texture, even if it's the same darn texture. Something to keep in mind. Let's show you how to do this. So we're going to right-click on our house, convert to edible mesh, and then we want to get the what the what do you call that the polygon tool polygon tool you click the other window so I've clicked down here it shows me I've got this other window I look over here it looks about like it's a window like and then basically the red line shows me I've got it here alright I want to apply the same texture it's the same window texture to both windows but just only see half of it so go back to the material editor open up this little thing and there's a button right here this one I had to I, I think I had to ask two people about this why isn't my model working? It's like, well, I told them I drag and drop textures. They laughed at me. So avoid the laughter. You click apply. Apply is the button. And it applies it to that particular thing, assuming you actually have that object has been mapped before with something. Okay, go ahead, and we're going to go remap it. So UVW map. Uh, what did we have? Was it X and fit? So it was UV. It's, it's planar mapping we're using and it was X and fit and then you should see it and it looks right oh except for the fact that we still got both windows now we could go back in and show you that un unwrapping thing again but uh, basically all I need to do is get rid of half of this and you'll need to use both for some types but I wanted to show you both ways of doing this in this lesson so now what we're gonna do this is a lot easier let me zoom in even a little bit more on this window so you can just see uh, not a moron window but a little more on this window if sorry uh, and then basically what I'm going to go over here is go to I think it's V tile no nah, not V tile it's vertical <laughs> it's U tile and grab the little slider bar oh you know what and oops eh. and let's just put 0.5 in that box see we're at 0.5 in this box right here and click on it and, and there we go click another box there it is so at 1, it shows the entire texture. At 0.5, it shows half the texture. Okay, so 0.5 on that. And there we've got our our house and things looking good here, pretty good. Now we still need to do the door. So let's uh, maybe I'll zoom out a bit more so we can see that the door is centered. There's You can sort of see the shadow where the door is. That's kind of cool. Oh, we vector shaded it. That's why. <laughs> All right, so right-clicking on Convert to Editable Mesh get that uh, polygon tool and click where the door is make sure from the other views that you actually do indeed have the door selected and we're gonna go ahead and drop our final texture this is texture number four and it's a picture of a door
And usually what I forget to do is when I add my final texture, I forget to name it. Uh, oh, right. Uh, it doesn't quite fit, does it? Because we didn't map this right. So UVW map. Uh, what was it? At y and fit. So we did a UVW map. It's a planar map. Uh, and Y and fit and that's probably what the fifth time we've done that in here today so you should be an expert at that by now and indeed that does look pretty darn good <laughs> if I do say so myself we now sort of have a, a, a house and we've got some window things going on and the windows are sort of tinted blue but they're gonna glow in the dark a little bit okay now final steps let's make this model oh wait I forgot to do it and I mentioned I would forget to do it didn't I back in the material editor that last texture number four or number seven or whatever I didn't give it a name the door so I should name it the last it'll be fine if you don't name these by the way it'll still go through anyway so I've named my door there close that up that's what I gonna do I gotta right click and convert to edible mesh and we're gonna make this house look a heck of a lot better right now so uh, if you don't have the tab bar across the top, the one that we're looking for is modifiers. You can right click and make sure you have the tab panel as a check mark there. Click modifiers. You'll remember our friend, Mr. Spray Paint Can. Yes, the vector shading tool. And what we're going to do is, uh, let's see, um, let's see. We're going to do some fancier stuff with the vector shading tool right now. We're going to right click on it. I'm going to convert to edible mesh again. I forgot to select something. And I'm going to go ahead and get the polygon tool. And I'm going to select the, just the front of of my house, just the, just the front part of the, the eaves. And what we're going to do is we're going to tint this a different color so that it looks different than the rest. It'll look, it'll look better if it's a different tint. OK. And so I've got that one selected. Make sure that you've it, it's got the right one from the side or the top, that that is the right, indeed the right polygon. And we're going to click on our friend, uh, Mr. Spray Paint Can, the vector shading tool. And we're going to get, uh, I don't know, like a gray. Uh, I could make a dark green. By the way, you know, if you click any of these colors, uh, the little color next to this thing here, you, you can modify the color to be anything you want. So if, if we grab that and we make it really, really, really dark green and close that window up, now we have a dark green. And I'm just going to paint that in. Whoa, that's probably too dark. <laughs> Maybe a little lighter. There we go. Let's try that. Yeah, you know, maybe gray. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, I don't even worry caring about caring about how much uh, I'm applying to this. So let's go to the back and right click and convert to edible mesh. Grab the polygon tool, grab the back of our house. Make sure from the other views you do indeed have the back of the house. Go to the vertex shading in there and we'll get a, a gray again here. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, maybe a little bit lighter here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, next, uh, underside of our roof, probably darker than the rest of our house. Convert it to an edible mesh. Grab that little uh, thing. Make sure you've got the underside of your house selected and not one of the walls of your house. Go to the polygon tool. We're going to make this one a light gray and color that in a little bit maybe add a dark green tint to it there we go that's just in case somebody sees that you know might as well maybe a little black over in this corner just to add a little diversity uh, maybe not that much maybe I'll put a 10 percent white over that because that's a little too dark there we go that looks pretty good all right some other things we could do uh, let's see uh, overall I'm thinking this looks pretty oh yeah the <laughs> the chimney uh, right click Oops, sorry. Right click, convert to edible mesh. Grab the, uh, what do you call this thing? The uh, the element tool and grab our chimney. Make sure your chimney is selected. And uh, in this case, we're going to color this all in in a nice cheery shade of red. Okay, there we go. Oh, do you like the sound effects in class? Good. Okay, so I've colored my chimney in in red. Hey, it looks like we've used a whole nother texture. All right, right click, convert to edible mesh, and what we're going to do is grab the polygon tool and grab just the top of our chimney. Ah, it's going to take me a while to get that, isn't it? Okay. It took me like five or six clicks to get it, but eventually I've got the top of the chimney selected. Vertex tool, black, shaded in. And we've hidden all of those bricks. We didn't even have to worry about how we mapped it. There we go. So there is our finished house. 
And I've got a couple more tips that I wanted to share with people uh, before you... Oh, make sure you save it. All right, and there we have it. Now, uh, the first tip. Um, somebody had added a whole bunch of objects together. Let me save the... Did I save the house? Yeah. Let me make a new one. Yeah. New all. Okay. And let's make a box. And then let's make a ball. And you don't have to do any of this, but oh, uh, ugh, tube. Okay, so we've got all these boxes and things. We right click, we convert to editable mesh, and we say attach. Let's attach this one. And we right click and we convert to editable mesh, and we attach a third thing. And now we've got three things that are one object, right? We did attachments last in the last lesson. Now, one of the things people are saying, well, when I, I grab these objects and I try and rotate them, they all rotate around the wrong axis. You know, it's, it's not right. It's in the wrong spot. And so my object isn't working. So here's how you fix that. Uh, this one took me a while to figure out, by the way. Um, where is it? Okay. Up in the toolbar, we haven't even talked about this one. This. I don't know what it's called. Let me look. It's called the hierarchy. Okay, hierarchy. And what you're going to want to do is use this effect pivot only. You click that. You grab the four arrow move tool. So, four arrow move tool. We've clicked effect pivot only. Now we can move the pivot without moving the model. So, if we wanted it to rotate around this particular object, we just put it in the center of whatever object we want it to rotate around. We unclick this, and now if we go rotate, now maybe it'll rotate around the object you want it to rotate around. So that was my tip number number one. Let me delete this. Also, all right, and the final tip I have to share with you before this class ends is how to set your graphics driver. And I'm trying to remember how to do this myself. So let's see, where is that? That is under uh, Customize. And Customize up at the top and Preferences at the very bottom of that. And it'll bring up a little window. And, uh, oh, why is it not doing that? Maybe you have to be in the four arrow tool. Let's try that again. Customize preferences. Oh, probably because I was zooming in with the control key. All right. Uh, so that, uh, once again, it should look like this, where you have like six or seven tabs across the top. And I think it's under viewports. So the tab you're going to want to click on is called viewports. And then you're going to go down here where it says choose driver. Now, if you were taking my class, I think I told you to use the Heidi driver. But really, uh, if you're doing a lot of modeling, the one that seems to work best for most people is the Direct 3D or vice versa, OpenGL. And when you click Choose Driver, you you get these choices again. And I had told you in class to pick Heidi. And what you really got to do want to do probably is Direct 3D. Although some people prefer OpenGL, uh, I think Direct 3D. Uh, uh, Gmax has a problem with too many polygons and textures and intersecting things. Uh, and you're probably better off in, in Direct 3D. Anyway, you have to quit out and restart the program before that takes effect. Uh, Direct 3D does have a tendency to crash if you're using this program and have their open at the same time, um, like when you're trying to take a class. All right, and that basically concludes this. If you have been uh, taking uh, my class in uh, basic GMAX modeling, you should now have uh, a book with uh, a bunch of links on it to a variety of other videos which go with my GMAX boot camp uh, which talk more in detail about texturing, uh, map, texture mapping, vector shading, uh, putting your root node in a box and will help you get all up to speed on those sorts of things. Thank you for joining me.